Welcome to Charleston Parents Connect. I am Danica Todd, your certified doula, licensed massage therapist, and certified yoga and Pilates instructor. It is my intention through sharing content and creating community to transform your relationships, inspire connection, and lead communities to live unapologetically. For this week's Throwback Thursday, I'm going to read to you my blog from Charleston Birth Doula under the title, Five Better Things to Say to a Loved One After a Pregnancy Loss. In honor of keeping this true to Throwback Thursday, I'm going to read it as it is written. But I do wanna let you know that Pregnancy and Infant Loss Month is actually in October. So as this year's Pregnancy and Infant Loss Month comes to a close, I decided maybe I would sneak a blog in after all. See, I lost a daughter, Lily, on Christmas Eve, December 24th, uh, 2010. And it still pains me to talk about it, even with two full-term pregnancies since then. Couple that with this year's continued education for the doula community being on stillbirth, I just wanted to crawl under a rock and cry. I think it's great that there is a way for our community to process and grieve through such a tough time. And for me personally, having my newsfeed explode with well-intended memes and profile pictures overlaid of pink and blue is like tearing open an old wound. I don't need to walk to remember her. I think about Lily every day of my life. So just like buying a bunch of stuff in pink won't actually screen for breast cancer for families who have experienced the loss, we don't need awareness. We live it every day. And blowing up all over social media that won't bring our babies back. So this blog is for the extended family, the friends, and the community who desperately want to help during this hard time and just don't know what to do. So here are five better things that you can say or do for your loved ones when going through a trauma like a pregnancy or infant loss. Instead of saying, you can try again, Say, put your cooler on the front porch because I'm dropping off dinner. See, it doesn't matter if we try again. You can't replace a child with another child. It isn't like I lost my house key and I just go get a new one. It doesn't make this loss any less painful. Trust me. We will let you know if and when we want company. But until we do, bring food. And don't plan on staying to visit. As a matter of fact, when you are invited in, politely decline and you will be loved for it. This is definitely a time where a ring and dash is appropriate. Better yet, go to a website like Take Them a Meal and set up a meal calendar. Make sure you give the same guidelines for friends and family. Let them know that the cooler will be outside at what time and whether the family prefers a text message when the food has arrived or a knock at the door. Instead of saying, at least you know you can get pregnant, say, plan on taking a nap at this time because I'm going to come over and catch up on the housework. Again, this isn't about you. This isn't about your feelings or your recognition. This is about allowing the family space to grieve without having to worry about the day-to-day -day chores and obligations. So take a deep breath, bring your cleaning products with you, and don't forget to empty the trash. Number three is instead of saying, at least you already have a child or children, say, I will blank for your child. Another great gift is to take a shift with the children. They may or may not even understand what is happening, but their lives are still a jam-packed schedule. They might need a ride to or from school, have music or sports practice, or just need a play date at the park. 
How about instead of saying anything at all that sounds like God's plan, say, I love you and I'm here for you day or night. And I mean it because grief knows no calling hours. As someone who heard every version of God's plan, let me tell you that the biggest accomplishment of pregnancy loss for me was the fact that I didn't actually punch anybody in the face. To be clear, the family brings God into the conversation and they talk about his plan, go right on ahead. Validate that for them. If they haven't said a word, refrain from using anyone else's plan as condolence for their plans not coming to fruition. And then finally, instead of saying, it will get better, say, this totally sucks. Yes, deep down, we all know things will get better. But in the middle of loss and trauma, we don't want to hear it. We're angry. We feel like we've been given a raw deal and validating our experience and feelings is really the only humane thing to do for us. Our message will change depending on what stage of grief we're in. Just keep validating and parroting back. One day, we'll be able to be rational about things, but right now, we just need you to agree with us. So I'm gonna leave you with two final thoughts. Think of them like a bonus fry at the bottom of your takeout bag. Notice how I didn't have you asking any questions. I didn't have you ask if you could clean the house or help with little Johnny. In my experience, as a doula, families have a hard time asking for help and they'll often turn it down. So in the words of Nike, just do it. Bring the food, set up the play date, take care of them the way you would want to be taken care of. Know that you are a blessing to this family and your service is greatly appreciated. And then finally, let me just put this beautiful, imperfect drawing I made right here. I learned this technique as part of my doula certification. When in doubt, remember, comfort in, dump out. You send comfort to those closer to the trauma by doing things to help them. And when no other words seem right, just say, I love you. You dump out out your feelings and opinions to those further away from you, further away from the trauma. If you're in doubt over who is closer to the trauma, assume the other person is closer. This means the parents who have experienced a loss can scream whatever they want, whenever they want, to whoever they want, and no one gets to dump anything back on them. If you're still a little confused over what you can say or do, send flowers in a card. I still have every card that was given to me and that bouquet of flowers that my husband sent to me at work. Well, he made everyone at work cry with me. I wish I could say that I hoped you enjoyed this week's throwback, but in reality, I hope you came away with some awesome tools and information that you can use or that you can share with your family if you are unfortunately also going through a loss. If you need support in what you're going through, please do not hesitate. Contact me. You can um, contact me privately. Um, through Facebook, you can message me, or you can email me directly at Danica at DanicaTodd.com, and I will be happy to help you get some resources or just be that year for you because I've been there and I totally get it. I know. No matter what stage you're at right now, just know that I know, and I'm sorry. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks. See ya.